Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Niemeyer of the University of Memphis. I'm a practicing grief therapist as well as a grief researcher. And I want to speak with you a little bit today about what I don't do during my day job at the university or in my counseling practice, but what I really do to attend to the heart of my grief and to also help me process a bit more the experiences of many of the clients who speak with me about the diverse losses that they sustain. That is, I found that making use of non-literal language, poetic expression, figurative speech, sometimes captures better than public language ever can something about the heart of our grieving and our yearning for hope and transformation. And I want to share with you just a couple of poems, uh, one from my forthcoming book entitled The Art of Longing, and another from a published book of poetry entitled Rainbow in the Stone. I'd like to share with you just one poem from each and a little bit of the backstory of how I came to write them. In the first case, in the aftermath of the death of my mother-in-law, my wife's mother, the last of our four parents to survive, I found myself driving through a deep Canadian winter in order to offer a day-long workshop for healthcare professionals about grief and loss. The snowstorm was swirling outside the rented car windows and I found that the long O sounds that I introduced into the poem that I'll read you in a moment echoed this howling wind as I watched the endlessly receding landscape slip by me and it's just a white coloration. This kind of sensory pull between seeing the landscape slipping past as I moved forward somehow to me found expression in some of the images of this poem and hinted at a kind of tension in grieving that I experienced in myself and in many of those who I serve. So this poem is entitled simply, The Art of Longing. Those of us who have driven the long, cold road alone have watched the thin line of trees, frosted white, slipping behind like memories. We know the pull of something unseen beyond the reach of dry eyes, fixed, blinking at the distant mist. We ride the road with our lonely ghosts, unwavering in their devotion, like penitents at the altar of our grief. This is how we perfect the art of longing, learn to nurse the hurt, refuse the fullness of this world. For now, we keep driving, lean into the dimming light, lean further toward winter's receding horizon and away from arrival. The second poem is one that really arose directly from my psychotherapeutic work with a bereaved mom. Carr was an African-American mother who had the tragic experience at seven months of gestation as she carried her child, of losing that child and delivering instead of a healthy, thriving infant, delivering a stillborn child, a child who touchingly she named Spirit because as she told me, that's how she came to me, was as a spiritual rather than a physical being. I found myself after the session being deeply moved by what she had said and taking the time then, subsequently, I drafted this poem to honor Spirit and to her courageous mother with whom I was working in therapy. And the poem is entitled simply Spirit. She was seven months in you, wrapped snug in your house of flesh when she came to rest, turned her face to the dark wall. Beyond your high, hard hope you knew in your heart that she was gone, this sliding shift of gravity in your belly, in your bed. You named her spirit because this is how she came to you, there and not there, a doll baby with eyes painted shut. Instinctively, your hands reach out, grasp at air, try to pull the light toward you, into you, disperse the darkness. A silent cipher, no one can know what you have lost. 
Now she stares at you with the indifference of the angels, through the paper eyes, smiles of baby pictures in your obstetrician's office, the glazed gaze of newborns nursing at their mother's breasts. One after another, she tries on lives in the frames, in the arms of strangers. She leaves each like a pair of discarded shoes. And so you seek her in the misty maze to which she has retreated, the shadow flash of dreams, the sudden sightings of a body, small and dark as a polished stone and as cold, left still on the couch, found wrapped in a box. She practices dying until it is perfected, until you have found a new way of holding on. And I'm pleased to report that Cara did find a new way of holding on, not only to her child, but also to her larger family and to the life and life purpose that carried her from that death to an ongoing life. Thank you for sharing these moments with me. Tonight I hold this candle in memory of you. In some way, somehow My love will shine through I close my eyes Lost in the glow There are so many things I want you to know This candle says I love you This candle says I miss you This candle is saying I remember you When I'm holding it toward heaven It feels like you If you're looking down tonight and see this candle burning bright, it says I'm wishing you 